Hello everybody, I am Jarrett Ross, a genie vlogger, and welcome back to another Professional Genealogist Reacts. On today's video, I'll be watching Jeremy Clarkson Explorer's Kilner Jar Connection from Who Do You Think You Are? This is the fourth part of the Jeremy Clarkson episode clips uh, from Who Do You Think You Are on their YouTube channel. And so far we've watched Jeremy Clarkson... Uh, look at his family tree and kind of go through it for the first time, kind of generally talking about his father's side and his mother's side. Then uh, the second video, he went to his mother's and talked to her about what did she know about the family? Um, Cause he did know about Kilner jars and he wanted to know, you know, how are they, how was that connection um, uh, to him and what did it all mean? And then uh, she said that she didn't even really know much about it because she didn't really have contact with her grandmother. And so then when he went to explore, he checked out different sites where uh, the factories were, learned a little bit more about the history. And then last uh, we saw, he was basically going to learn more about uh, the Kilner Jar um, factory, what happened to it. So based on the title of this video, I'm guessing that he's going to be going uh, further and exploring the Kilner Jar connection. And maybe in this part, they'll talk about the actual Kilner Jar. In the last episode, they did mention that the Kilner factory or the, the glass factory they had mostly did all sorts of bottles, but Kilner Jars weren't something that was really mentioned. And then they talked about... Um, one of the Kilner family members being the one to really take the company to the next level. So I'm guessing that's what we're going to get into uh, in this. Before we do jump into the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. Also, be sure to subscribe and click that bell for notifications on future videos. Um, I am planning to do a whole lot more of these Who Do You Think You Are is now that I've gone through the copyright stuff with it. Uh, for three videos and it's been fine each video for the most part. Um, so I'm going to try to get more of these where I'm going to try to upload a whole bunch at once. And if you're on Patreon, you will be able to get early access. So if you want early access, be sure to check out my Patreon. Um, I'm going to try to be putting a whole bunch of these up there real early. Um, so with all that said, let's go ahead and jump into the video now. It's Jeremy Clarkson. Listen, I'm sorry to disturb you. I was just wondering how many people on the Sunday Times Rich list are um, involved in packaging? Have you got that on a computer database that you just look up? They've got how much? 4.95 billion. Smurfit, 262. Instant 60. That's all I want, yep. Okay, take care. Bye. Packaging, um, packaging still is the business to be in. I mean, it was back then, obviously, and it is now. The rousings, the people who do Tetra Pak, you know, the, um, the milk cartons that spray milk everywhere when you open them. 4.95 billion, they're the third richest people in Britain. Cornish, 700 million. The Smurf, it's 262 million, and so it goes on. I mean, packaging, I suppose it's because you have it, you throw it away. You always have new bits of packaging. And it was then, I mean, that's what the Kilners were doing. They were in packaging. It was disposable. Do you have any Kilner jars? You can't. Do you think it's hinged or screw top? Screw top. It's hinged, see. I thought it was a hinged thing. No, they're the Lapalfe jars, the French ones. The French ones, it's all gone. Hmm. It's a baffling thing. I mean, how can a company that size have disappeared? I've spotted an opening in the market. I'm going to start like a glassworks <laughs> with like a rubber seal. That would be pretty cool. Call it something like the Kilner Job. The brochure boasts that the Kilners won an award, but it doesn't say what for. So Jeremy heads to South Kensington, the site of one of the great Victorian exhibitions. Because they won prizes at the Great Exhibition in 1862, and I want to see what they won it, what they won them for. Was it just quality, or was it something to do with this elusive Kilmer jar? The Great Exhibitions embodied the spirit of the Victorian age. A remarkable one-quarter of the British population visited the 1862 exhibition 
to marvel at the best the industrial might of Britain had to offer. Not to be left out, Kilner Glass secured a stand to show off their words to an eager world. Andy. Andy McConnell Andy is an expert on the history of glass. How are you? Yeah, I'm great, thanks very much. Good. Yeah. You found a little spot out the heat. Yeah, the reason I've come down here to this part of the neck of the woods, 1862, wasn't it? Was mm. Or one? 62, the big exhibition. Yes, the London International. The, London, the exhibition. Now, it says in the brochure, the Kilner brochure, that they won some prizes here and some medals. Well, this is what they won it for. Ah, fine, good. We're there. There we are. You're not going to call this a Kilner jar? No, that's nothing like a Kilner mm. jar. It's for wine merchants. It re-emphasises, whilst the Kilner jar, the name is held in this particular vessel, but in fact, what you're talking about is one of 3,000 objects that were being produced by 1,500 people on two sites that covered 17 acres. I mean, with, with its own railway sidings. The two factories were talking to each other by telephone. I mean, we... They well, were the two Kilner factories. The two were. Kilner factories in, 18... had in 1870s. They had telephones. I mean, extraordinary. They were well. They were absolutely on the button. You know, they're building their own railway carriages. They've got depots in London where you can actually bring the train into the depot to unload. I mean, we're talking about stupendous operation here. I mean, these guys were big. The, the bottle kings. You know, they were the bottle kings. It seems like Kilner were making 3,000 different products. They were. Hmm. And yet, only one of them has become known as a Kilner jar. Nobody seems to know what it is. One person who understands the Victorian ingenuity that created the Kilner jar is Susan Mossman, glass curator at the Science Museum. Well, According to Susan... That's pretty interesting that, you know, there's all these different experts and all sorts of stuff, and you even have experts in glass and history of glass and things like that. It's It's, it's such an interesting world. There's so many people that have such... Uh, unique ways of looking at things that, you know, you get all these crazy, uh, well, I call it crazy, but you get all these, you know, various types of jobs like this where it's like you have a glass expert. Like, you know, I would have never really thought necessarily there'd be someone who was like a glass expert or, or at least like a glass historian. Makes sense, I guess, that there would be a glass expert with so much glass in the world. But yeah. It was during the 1890s that Caleb finally hit upon the idea that would immortalise the name Kilner. Yeah, there you are, the family name. That's Kilner. a Kilner jar. That's a Kilner jar. Which has a screw top. Exactly. Not a hinge top. Not a hinge top, no. So, so it's a screw top. Screw top. With the, the piece that right, comes off, seal. yeah. With a rubber seal, and that's probably the, that's the airtight seal. And is this the, was that the clever bit? That probably is the clever bit, combined with these screw tops, which were invented in the middle of the 19th century. Because you can put a very hot preserve in it, cool it down in the bottle, and it's airtight and it's bacteria-free. But did they take out a patent on it? There's 1999, which you can be very... It's very, very sort of worn, actually. You can hardly see it. Where it's, is it? Can I, just... I think it's just there. The number on the bottom of the jar could be a patent number. But, and can they find that actual patent then? Sounds awful because we've now reached the point where we've established what Kilner was. Dynamic, go ahead, large, huge. And then it went. And I'm sure there's a very important, noble social reason why that happened. General strike, depression, foreign competition, could be anything. But selfishly, I'm quite keen to find out what happened to the money. So, so there's plainly a lot of it. Um, so first port of call in the morning, patent's office. 1999 written on that bottle. Is there somewhere a dusty piece of paper that says Jeremy Clarkson is owed 42 billion pounds? Okay, and I, I kind of like that a commercial came up there because it's in, it's interesting that he you know he's talking about the you know is there a piece of paper that says Jeremy Clarkson is owed what you know however many billion pounds, and a lot of people kind of think this when they look at their history, but if you really think about it, like if you were to go trace back to I think it was John Kilner was the one who started it all the oldest Kilner, and then trace it back down. 
find all of the living descendants who would then also be heirs in the exact same way that Jeremy Clarkson is, assuming every single descendant is an equal heir of that money, you'd probably be looking at, like, I think the uh, Clarkson guy was born in the 1700s, died in the 1800s. So you're probably looking at least a couple hundred people, if not possibly over a thousand people. Um, you know, depending on how well the family did in terms of having more offspring. But I do know that there's a lot of families that can have a whole lot of offspring. And a lot of those offspring then have a lot of offspring. And then within just a few generations, you have thousands of people. So with an ancestor having been born in the 1700s, dying mid 1800s, certainly possible to have, you know, over a thousand or at least hundreds of living descendants. So from what he's talking about, if he is right, he would technically probably have to do air research as well to make sure that every single one got a piece and probably by the end of it, I mean, I guess if it's, you know, a couple billion, you know, divided by a couple hundred, you're still getting a lot of money, even if it was a couple million necessarily. Um, but yeah, just, you know, it's a funny thing. A lot of people really do bring that up when they're, thinking about their family ancestry. Next morning, Jeremy arrives at the British Library where copies of all patents are kept. You remembered your number? Mm -hmm. you spotted oh, yeah, 1999. How could I forget that? So he <laughs> says, oh, I was going to make a four billion pounds, but then, uh, yeah, I forgot the number. So now I've remembered the number. Morning. Jeremy Clarkson. I have an appointment to see... You've already done it. Stephen. Jeremy Clarkson. Sorry to drag you out of bed so early. But um, I'm quite keen. Now, have you got these patents here? Oh, that'd be so cool if they do. I hope they do. Ten minutes and a half a mile later, Jeremy finds himself back in familiar territory. We're now back to where we started from. This is the Kilner John. This is the Kilner John registered by them. Perhaps there was a possibility of litigation. They wanted to warn someone off. We don't know. It turns out that 1999 is a red herring. The Kilners trademarked the name Kilner Jar, but they didn't patent the design. Hmm. This meant other companies could manufacture and sell identical jars, but they had to call them something else. Over the years, the Kilners did apply for 18 patents. But these were for glassmaking techniques, not new ideas for bottles. Perhaps surprisingly, they didn't even complete half the applications. Void by reason of the patentee having neglected to file a specification in pursuance of the conditions of the letter's patent. In other words, they never sent in there. The complete document, exactly. Neglected, neglected, and... neglected. I mean, to me, that speaks volumes. But they were successful in registering the name the Kilner Jar. Which leads me on to an important question. Well, who's got it now? So I've been killing the jar in. Yeah. To see if you can find that as a registration. Yeah. Kilner. I'm just waiting for it to come up so I can see what this is for. And it says it is indeed for glass fruit preserving jars. And Mr. Anthony Enfield of Cheshire who possibly is trying to muscle in and take advantage of the name. Well, who the hell is this man? <laughs> Maybe it's a cousin. Flat six. That just has chancer written all over it, doesn't it? And any answers? Well, on a personal note, I'm going to ring this chap in Cheshire and find out if he's got any of my billions of pounds, you know. Hello, do you have any of my billions? As far as the story is concerned, the what happened to the Kilners, I still don't know why they went belly up. All right, well, another pretty good video. I think this was a good one in terms of showing kind of the typical old school genealogical research where you go to an actual library or, uh, you know, uh, archive or uh, repository or, you know, some place where it has documents that may relate to your family research. And then you go and you see what you can find. So 
Um, I'd mentioned in another video, could they find patents? And he did find partial patents, found a trademark. Um, so found interesting, you know, some stuff. And now he's got a lead on what happened to the, all of it. Because I'm sure somebody inherited it. I, I bet that guy that's in Cheshire or Cheshire or however you say it, I bet he is a relative of uh, Jeremy Clarkson's in some way, most likely through the Kilner family. So now we'll have to see where the rest of the journey leads us. I'm sure he'll find out more about the whole, you know, Kilner jar thing. Um, I am curious if they're going to look at the other side of his family, because in the first video he mentioned that with the Clarksons, they were all in the same area. I want to say it was like Tick Hill or Teaneck or something like that. Um, and... Uh, he, there wasn't as much as there was on the Kilners, so maybe they'll dive into that too. So it'll all be quite interesting. Well, thank you so much for checking out this video. If you did enjoy, please be sure to give it a thumbs up. It really does help me out. You can also click right about here if you would like to subscribe. It is completely free to do so. You can also follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at Genie Vlogger. I'm the Genie Vlogger. See you in my next video.